I believe my Phoenix power inverter just came in and he poked two holes in the box which is very interesting and enjoy some Helicrafter S20R stuff <laughs> to cover the labels that's also something really cool that I recently purchased and it's gonna arrive in I think two or three weeks it's gonna be a very fun project but now I wanna have a look at this inverter well here it is so it was just a box in the box and they have probably used inspection cameras and you can see they <laughs> almost poked through this box as well so we've got a 12 volt 500 VA model with the Shuko outlet. Let's have a look see what see at this. Victron Energy. Hell yeah, anytime anywhere. Yeah. Got a instruction book. And the result the power inverter itself, quite a beast for being just 500 watts. This is a real 500 watt inverter that can handle this 24 7 so it's going to be quite exciting to hey, take a look at this and uh, see what it can actually do here it is and this thing weighs a bloody ton for being only rated for 500 continuous watts so on this end it's pretty simple layout you've got the input which is 10 square millimeter maximum, which is more than adequate. Got a ground, you got a remote, which has already been bridged for us, which is nice. Uh, got on off and eco mode. And on the other side, there's a Shuko outlet. And that's it. 12 volt, 230. You can adjust it completely. 100% configurable so you can select between 210 and 240 I believe 50 or 60 Hertz it's a very nice so let's see this is the 12 volt 500 uh, internal fuse 120 amps recommended cross-section 6 or 10 square mil I would only use 10 square mil on this uh, LED blah 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 technical data 12500 continuous power 400 watts peak power 900 and when they say peak power they mean that it can handle that for probably several minutes Output voltage adjustable 230. See, fully adjustable, and uh, you can download their app, I believe, and just configure it quite easily, like that. Let's see. Wow, this thing is heavy. I can't even turn it around with the camera. Give me a moment here. I'm gonna try and turn this bloody thing around. So, on the bottom, this is how it looks like, and uh, I don't see any warranty void if removed stickers, and we're looking at this plastic case, it's held on by four screws here, so I can very easily just take the plastic off of it, and uh, yeah, it's pretty damn cool, I think, quite a nice inverter, and it's extraordinarily heavy, because inside here, this is a low frequency inverter you see the cooling fan there but this is actually a low frequency inverter let's see yeah there you can kind of see the toroid this is a low frequency inverter this is not a switch mode inverter and that's what makes this thing so good so yeah I think we should take it out and hook some power to it and see what it does before we open it <laughs> it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and uh, I want to take that cover off <laughs> here we are in the workshop I say let's hook it up to 
my power supply and uh, yeah I've created a bit of a mess here but let's hook it up to my power supply 10 amps and see what it does I want to make sure it works before I actually deploy it <laughs> go so power let's bring it up slowly 5 volts 10 volts 12.8 volt is bring up the current and really oh it's on I can hear humming from it that's always good let's have a look see if we have any output we do! 230 exactly! Yeah, that's pretty damn good. 50 exactly! Wow! That is really good! Increase the voltage and it doesn't change. Wow! This thing is well regulated. Holy smokes! This thing is well regulated. Well, I'm pretty damn happy with that. Let's plug something into it real quick. I uh, don't really have any good loads here though. Whatever. It works. <laughs> Which is awesome. <laughs> hey, so nice. Hey, take. Ah, oh, it hums so nicely. I wish you could hear it on camera. It's off now. Let me turn it on. So nice. <laughs> very, very nice. It works. Yeah. Let's go and. You know what? I so badly want to have a look inside of this first. So. Maybe I'll just take a screwdriver and. We'll pop the blue cover off real quick. Damn, look inside this beauty. Wow, that is one beautiful build right there. And then again, I wouldn't really expect much else from Victron, but yeah. Let's see, is the ground hooked up? Yeah, it's hooked to the case of this. Cool. And here's the input. 35, 35 and 35. So yeah, that is one. That's ninety. It's like one hundred amps of fusing actually. See the inputs go there, and here's the board and the out. The transistors are just. There's no heat sinks on them, so they are relying entirely on the fan to keep those cool. But yeah, this is probably a pretty high efficiency unit. I think it was ninety-two percent. So this is probably going to be absolutely fine. Look at the transformer. This is nice. Six square or something. Wire running there from the board. And here is probably the sense winding. And good output right here. Yeah, this is a really nice inverter. Look at this. And what do we have for driver in here? Where is the driver I see? Um... I can't really see one to be honest. Let's turn the lights on here. Let's see why isn't it working. Here we go. Where do we have the driver I see? Maybe it's on the other side of the board because I can't see one here. And here you have a little some kind of power factor correction, I'm guessing. Heh, <laughs> interesting. But where is the driver circuit? Oh yeah, I see it. It's on the bottom side of the board there. Okay. Okay, I see. I'm not gonna take the board out or anything. So, this is the best look that you'll get. See, transformer. What have you got for transformer beauty? Let's have a look. We've got a... what is it? Output. 230 volts, red to red is 7.18 volts, is that what it says? 
Yeah, 7.18 volts. Very interesting voltage. So yeah, it's not center tapped actually. I thought it was going to be a two-phase primary because that's usually what it is. But no, it's just a no, it's just an ordinary transformer with sense winding. Well, I call it connected up using my 10 square millimeter wires to my rather well, shitty battery here, but that doesn't really matter. It's on. The tiny house is plugged in. We got power. And here's the voltage being measured in the wall outlet there. 231. And the frequency is pretty much bang on. Uh, power, try the mercury lamp. Oh, that hums so nicely. Listen to that. 235. And it's going. Let's have a look at the current pull. I'm gonna reset this at zero. One of these crappy old clamps. So let's have a look at the current consumption. Four amps. This thing is, and I know the lamp isn't warmed up, but in this state, the old inverter drew over five amps. This thing is insanely efficient. We switch it off. It pulls 700 milliamps at idle. <laughs> I am perfectly happy with that. That is beautiful. The only thing that bothers me is that the logo is upside down now, but. <laughs> whatever that works really really well <laughs> quite pleased with that let's try the eco mode here we go it's in eco mode now and here we go it just switched off and it pulses the outlets which saves a lot of power. Hmm, that's cool. So now if I turn on the mercury lamp. Yeah, it works. So that is cool. Eco mode actually works. It's really, really cool. Let's turn it on in. Yeah, this is a bloody beautiful inverter. Works really well. Let's try the computer. Plugging that in, doesn't seem to make it cry or care. This is the old inverter. Switch mode technology. Not very reliable. Let's turn the monitor on. That runs straight on 12 volts. Let's see, there we go. Let's turn the computer on. And there is no problem whatsoever. And the voltage is perfect. 228, 50 hertz. It's bloody beautiful. Runs so well. Computer is now booting up. This is an old Pentium tree for those who are curious. Quite a high spec one, as you can see. I am absolutely in love with this thing already. <laughs> And look how little current it's drawing, 6.8 amps. Yeah, 92% efficiency, that's the difference between this and this Chinese one. Even though this one has pretty good efficiency, it is still pretty terrible actually. Because it is a dual conversion inverter. First it steps it up to high voltage DC. And then, after it stepped up to high voltage DC, it gets chopped off chopped up by these output MOSFETs into a sine wave and this is just kind of meh doesn't weigh anything compared to that thing so, and yeah these things are just not all that reliable and this thing has terrible voltage sense so when you put a load on it the voltage just it overcompensates and it becomes too high and too low so it's not all that great this thing 
as you can see it is rock solid 228 230 ish it's so close and look how little current it's drawing with the old inverter the computer would easily draw over 10 amps sitting idle right now we're drawing 5 amps the solar panels can more than keep up with this which is incredible the efficiency of this is just unbeatable there's no heat or anything it's just damn what the difference is the cooling fan running? nope <laughs> 4 point nine amps this thing is bloody efficient well let's switch the mercury lamp on we go with the cooling fan round for the first time it is actually temperature controlled or load controlled or something because it started up loud and now it's quiet we got 235 with that and I think the reason it goes up a little bit is because there's a big 10 microfarad capacitor up there which acts to phase compensate the inductor there and I think what happens is when this thing gets connected to that capacitor that capacitor puts some voltage back into it and uh, it messes up the sense a little bit but it doesn't actually matter this voltage is perfect still 235 it's working so well we're only drawing 8 amps granted the mercury lamp isn't warmed up yet but still switch that off and the fan kicks off as you can see the computer is running beautifully I wouldn't really expect much else though <laughs> this is great it really is yeah, well we're going to look at the sine wave. So let's bring out this old oscilloscope and uh, have a look at the sine wave. And then we'll read through the specs a little bit on this thing. And I'm just going to leave the computer running. This thing is working so well. I am so pleased. <laughs> what a beauty only doing 5 amps that's insane the efficiency of this thing is so freaking high and yeah we're gonna scan that later and download the app but I don't have my phone right now this is insane <laughs> got this crappy oscilloscope hooked up and I mean crappy because this thing has so many bloody issues I haven't been able to sort out so right now and this is the setup for measuring. You got this little isolation transformer here, and then it's running into that probe, and that's plugged in over here. There's the voltmeter, 229, and the inverter, of course. And the computer is still running, and this power supply is terrible, it does not have power factor correction whatsoever. So, as we can see here on the sine wave, the camera is not really gonna do a very good job with us today. And this scope has triggering issues, but if you look at the sine wave, you can see the top and bottom are equally cut off, and that is caused by the rectifier inside this thing. So let's go ahead and shut the computer off. Let's see. Turn off, power off, please. Go ahead and power off. <laughs> power off. So yeah, the waveform is going to change depending on what you power from the inverter. So there we go. And if you now shut the monitor off, shut the power off, so we unplug the computer here. There we go, unplugged. Now we can look at the sine wave in a bit more detail, and now you can see it's absolutely beautiful. Can you see that? It's absolutely beautiful now which is perfect you can see a tiny bit of crossover distortion actually but it's so tiny and in this application it really doesn't matter 
so we can make this stop going crazy this bloody oscilloscope like I told you is a complete piece of junk that's why it landed out here I can't make it trigger whatsoever <laughs> what a piece of crap but yeah I hope this comes out on video it looks pretty damn good <laughs> Wish this would come true better on video. But yeah, it looks pretty good. And let's try the mercury lamp. That doesn't actually affect it all that much at all. Because the mercury lamp is oh holding the camera further away seems to do pretty well. quite nice let's see can we move the position of this a little bit well this scope is such a piece of junk looks pretty good even with the mercury lamp unless the voltage 237 49.8 it's really hot in here so the frequency will probably drift on it a little bit it's working really well though switch the mercury lamp off yeah it looks really good really really good and this inverter decided to fall down <laughs> I guess he wanted, didn't want to live anymore, which is fine, <laughs> because it's not going to live anymore. <laughs> this inverter is so awesome. The fact that it's a proper transformer inverter is just, that's what makes this whole thing worth having. What a beauty. You know what, we should unscrew this cover and put it on the other way. Because <laughs> I think they're... The cover is identical actually. I could probably do that. I am really pleased with this. I look at the output voltage. Bang on. Absolutely perfect. Let's unplug this transformer here, which we're using for measuring. Let's turn this old junk oscilloscope off. And let's unplug. Yeah, I am very satisfied with this. <laughs> very satisfied with this. And notice, we got 232 ish. And the battery voltage is 14.5 right now. So this thing does not put out too much voltage when the batteries get charged which is great because that inverter over voltage when whenever that happened and now just for fun we can compare these cheap multimeters or actually this cheap multimeter let's plug it in here hope it doesn't explode on me it's saying 232 point nine and that's saying 231.8 so this one is exactly a volt too high i want to power up the computer again and see what that meter says when it sees see the voltage drop when i plug this in it actually goes up not down so that's cool let's turn it on and see if this meter gets affected by the sine wave shape no it says 230.5 236 and this is 2296 so it's actually pretty accurate this meter is just one volt too high so that's good to know so 
so we can use this sheep multimeter for everything but frequencies so you gotta turn the monitor on now so I can shut the computer off but we're gonna do one more check here yep we got earth good so yeah this thing doesn't have any problem running with my electrical system in here and for those of you who are familiar with this there's a ground fault interrupter here and in order to make this work I have tied the neutral and the ground together in this plug here from the inverter and it doesn't seem to care whatsoever about that so that's good and I checked before I plugged it in to see if the neutral is actually bonded to battery negative and no it's not so it doesn't seem to care the output is completely isolated from the input which I would of course expect since it's a transformer inverter but still better safe than sorry don't want to destroy it so there you go and uh, battery voltage is about 13 volts in the charge control let's see we're drawing about 5 amps here there's going to be a little bit here from the monitor as well. One amp. See how much we're putting in. Six amps. <laughs> this inverter is fantastic. So yeah, I'm just going to shut this off again. And that's it. I'm going to look at the manual next. Wherever it went. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and we will have a little look at the inverter of its specifications yes I had to flip it around I just took the screwdriver and rotated the cover around <laughs> this is not particularly hard to do 